the God we worship is a great God. He has called us together as a church, together as a community, together as ourselves. God calls us to show his world what he is like. We worship him and seek to imitate him in all we do for his glory. Brothers and sisters, I want to thank you for joining us in our service today. May God bless you for what you are already doing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you. As we are gathered here, as we meet together on this platform, we pause to think that our, what our God means to us. We pray that today we will grow more like him. We love you, God. We love you, Lord. And we want to share that love with others. Lead us to live a life of love. A life that shows who you are. A life that bears the light to the world that is living in darkness. Thank you, Father, that you continue to live with us. Bless us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I would ask Brother Ben to come and read the word of God from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 17, to chapter 5, verse 21. So let us all pay attention as Brother Ben is reading the word of God. Thank you. Praise God. And a very cold day today here, uh, but we rejoice in the Lord all the same. Uh, yeah, Johnson mentioned Ephesians 4, 17 to 5, 21. And it's an awesome verse, so listen up. Instructions for a Christian living. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learned. When you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which has been corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitudes of your mind, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbour, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their need, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not get, grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God, in Christ God forgave you. Follow, fo follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed. 
because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure or greedy person, such as a person, such a person is an idolater, has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them, for you were once darkened, uh, for you were once darkness, now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible and everything that is illuminated becomes a light that is why it is said wake up sleeper rise from the dead and christ will shine on you be very careful then how you live not as unwise but wise making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil therefore do not be foolish but understand what the lord's will is do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wow, praise the Lord. It's an awesome verse. Imagine uh, us as a fragrant of a fragrance offering and a sacrifice to God. So we'll get Johnson back here anyway and uh, find out what he's got for us. It's uh, going to be good. Praise the Lord. Um. I'm going to share with you on the theme a time for opportunity. A time for opportunity. Uh, in verse 5 of the reading, uh, chapter 5 of Ephesians, verse um, uh, 15, says, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. A time for opportunity. A time for opportunity. Uh, considering the impact of COVID-19, I, I suspect uh, most people are open to the idea of finding opportunities. So perhaps we listen closely to Paul's words. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. How do you make the most of every opportunity while at the same time exercising caution so that you do not make a huge mistake? How do you make the most of every opportunity while at the same time seeking to understand the Lord's will? The believers should carefully use their time, making use of opportunities for doing good. Galatians 6 verse 10 says, So then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So this implies that we should not allow ourselves to be controlled by our circumstances. Rather, we should make use of time as a valuable commodity or a resource, as a master does with his servant. So, God's will is for you 
to have an abundant life. That is God's will. That is the first thing we need to see. God wants us to have an abundant life. This abundant life consists of both the physical and the spiritual. God wants us to have a rich, rewarding relationship with him and with other people. But also, God wants us to have our material needs met. That is why Christ taught us to pray, give this day our daily bread. That is why God gave us health bodies. That is why God gave us good minds. God wants us to take advantage of every good opportunity. Of course, you and I have an additional blessing. We live in a land of opportunity. That's where we live. God wants us to have an abundant life. So God wants us to be able to meet our responsibilities to our families. God wants us to have our physical and material needs being met out. We must never find in scripture an excuse to neglect our physical needs and the needs of our families. Why be so concerned about using every opportunity to help draw people from darkness to light? If you find the opportunity to talk to people who doesn't know Christ, please use it. Because the days are evil. That is what Paul has written. The days are evil. Right now, we don't know what the future is like during this pandemic, COVID-19. But the only thing we know is that the one who created the world is the one who is in control. Not our scientists. Not our doctors. Not all the professors we may think of. Sometimes, however, we are only waste to enemy. That is the second thing we need to see. We sometimes sabotage ourselves. That's what sin is all about. We do not always make wise choices. That is why Paul tells us to be careful how we live. Be careful how we live. Not as unwise, but as wise. That is why Paul writes about living foolishly. We sometimes are our own worst enemy. We sometimes make bad decisions, bad choices, poor investment, and wise plans in the things that we do. We fall up with God's will for our lives spiritually, rationally, and materially. What are you doing with the time God has given you? Are you making the most of every opportunity? Allow him to use you and your time as he sees fit. Are we in a position of surrendering our lives to Christ so that Christ can use us? So, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So, believers must not waste their time being foolish. We have a job to do and our lives must reflect our motivation and our goal. To serve our Lord, to share his gospel message, and to be ready for his kingdom. And that is what we should be doing. So, how do we avoid this foolishness? How do we avoid this unwise decisions? Avoid these unwise decisions. How do we make the most of every opportunity while avoiding treacherous pitfalls? First of all, Paul tells us to keep a clear head. Keep a clear head. That makes sense, doesn't it? We make the best decisions when we use the brain that the God has given us. Paul writes, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't think I need to tell you that the, there are so many addictions out there that are destroying people's lives. Alcohol is quite obviously one of our most serious addictions. As Richard Blamer has written, we drink for joy and become miserable. We drink for sociability and become argumentative. 
We drink for sophistication and we become obnoxious. We drink to help us sleep and are awakened and exhausted. We drink for exhilaration and end up depressed. We drink to gain confidence and become afraid. We drink to make conversation flow and become incoherent. We drink to diminish our problems and see them multiply. Many lives have been destroyed by addiction to alcohol. Many families live in poverty because of addiction to alcohol. We could make a significant impact on the number of deaths from automobile accidents each year if we could only keep people from drinking and driving. But that is not the only addiction plaguing our society. There are quite a number of them. Paul wrote these words in order to deliberately contrast drunkenness with the infilling of the spirit in the same way that he contrasts those in darkness and those living in the light in verse 5, chapter 5, verse 8. So getting drunk leads to debauchery. The word refers to a drunk person being out of control as well as to the person's wastefulness of resources of life and itself. So they have no place in the these have no place in the lives of believers. So drunkenness has no place in the lives of believers. Besides, we don't need alcohol. According to Paul, for we are filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we are filled with the Holy Spirit, so we don't need it. Paul contrasted to getting drunk with wine, which produces temporary high, to being filled with the Spirit, which produces long-lasting joy. We were all given the one spirit to drink. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 18. That's what it says. When a person is drunk, everyone can tell. If a person is drunk, is moving. You can tell that that person is drunk. His or her actions make it obvious. So in like manner, our lives should be so completely under the spirit's control that our actions and ways should show beyond doubt that we are filled with the presence of God's Holy Spirit. If we are able to detect a person who is drunk walking in the street, we should be able to see a person who is filled with the Holy Spirit as they are walking in the street. That is what we should see. Although Ephesians 5 verse 18 is often quoted in support of undrinking efforts, the underlying issues go deeper than whether or not to drink alcohol. The more important concern is what or who is going to be in control of your life? Who is controlling you? Either the Holy Spirit or something else. What is it that is controlling your life? Are you being controlled by the Holy Spirit? Or are you being controlled? You are under the influence of something else. We could make an enormous dent in crime in this nation if we just stop the flow of illegal drugs. If you think drug use is in victimless crime, look what it's doing to innocent victims of drug-related crimes. Look what it's doing to the people and nations that are involved in feeding our appetite for drugs. Of course, we can get addicted to prescription painkillers pen as well. So the truth of the matter is that addictions of any kinds are proliferating in our society. They are moving in our society. They are there in our society. There is something about modern life that seems to encourage addictions of all sorts. One report focused on the vulnerability of women to video poker machines located in places women are likely to frequent. One woman put her family into bankruptcy and lost her husband and two children. Another left her 10-month-old infant in a car for seven hours and the child died. Men who had lost their homes through gambling deaths allowed a reporter into one of their closed 12 step meetings. So the stories were heartbreaking. Tales of our families were destroyed by this addiction. So you can see that addiction is real. There is something about modern society that feeds these addictions. Some people are addicted to pornography, some to shopping, some to their computer, some to their snack foods. If we become addicted to anything that becomes an impediment to our being all that God has created us to be, 
we need to get rid of it. And that hinders from being filled with the Holy Spirit. Because we are addicted to something else. Can you look at anything in your life that is pulling you in the direction of unwise decision making? Is there anything in your life that is endangers your health? Your relationship with others? Your relationship with God? It's time to turn around. St. Paul tells us to keep a clear head. A clear head. He also tells us to keep a positive spirit. He writes, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speak to one another with the psalms, with the hymns, and with spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart of the Lord, to the Lord. Isn't that wonderful advice? Speak to one another with psalms, with hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. We like to be around someone who is always positive, always joyful, always brightening up the room, don't we? Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. We need someone who can sing. Reverend Douglas Mayer tells about a man who claimed to be the most accurate fortune teller in the world. A man once came to this fortune teller and said he had only one real question about his future, and that was, how will my life end? And the fortune teller gets into the crystal ball and then announced, your life will end when you die. No wonder he was so accurate. The man nodded and then said, yes, but will I be happy? Ah, said the fortune teller. That has nothing to do with the future, but what you do in the present. Meaning that happiness is not about something that is going to happen in the future. It's what you do in the present that makes you happy. He was right again. God's will for us is to choose to be happy. This day and every day to believe the gospel, to cherish the truth that in all things God is with us and we can be victorious in any circumstances. Whatever is surrounding us, we still choose to be happy because God is the one. He is the giver of all this. That does not mean that we will not go through difficult times. Yes, we may go through difficult times, but we choose to be happy. It means that we will not let our circumstances determine how we look at life. Rather, we will, look, we will let our faith determine how we look at our circumstances. It is all to do with our attitude. Charles Swindle wrote a wonderful paragraph about the effect of a positive attitude in his book, Strengthening Your Grip. He said, the longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It is more important than the past. It is more important than education, the money, than circumstance, than failures, than success, that than what other people think or say or do. So it is more important than appearance, giftedness, or a skill. It will make or break a company, a church, or a home attitude. So the remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day. We cannot change our past. We cannot change the fact that people act in a certain way. We cannot change their inevitable. The only thing we can do is play on the stream we have, and that is our attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me, and 90% how I do react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitudes. We are in charge of our attitudes. If we are to make the most of every opportunity, as the Bible says, we need to make a clear head and we need to make a positive spirit. And one more thing says St. Paul, we need to give thanks in all things. That is what he said. We need to give thanks in all things. He writes, sing and make music in our heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the ultimate source of a positive spirit, which is to always give thanks to God. Give thanks. I have said it before, but it is a critical truth. The happiest people 
in the world are those who have an attitude of gratitude. Think about your life. So to thank God for everything that comes your way is the best antidote in the world to be self-defeating attitude that many people have that the world owes them success and happiness and the good things of life. The world owes us nothing. But we serve a gracious God who will pour our, out our blessings on us if we open ourselves to God. Trust God and allow God to bless your life. Trust him because he's God. A writer, Ruth Byrne, Gadlonia, offers this piece of advice. Let me share my little secret. This is what he says. When I feel that the world is caving in and my tears of hopelessness are just about to fall, I look down at my hands and stretch out my fingers and I start to count my blessings. I say to myself, I have ten fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. I can move all of them. My skin is clear. I can see. I can hear. I can talk. I can walk. I have a family. I have a home. I have friends. I have a job. Not everyone is this. I am a very lucky person. And I am whole and I can cope with these minor setbacks. He says, try it in your darkest hour. At the height of the most unfortunate situation, count your blessing by starting with your fingers. Such good advice. Count your blessings. Develop an attitude of gratitude. I'm saying to you that many people today are so fixed on what's wrong with our world that they miss some of the blessings. God wants to pour out on them the most, make the most of every opportunity that you meet. Keep a clear head and a positive spirit in all things. Give God thanks. A time for opportunity. Make use of every opportunity. Make use of every opportunity that God has created you for. And in that, whether you are surrounded by bad things surrounding you, you always need to thank God for the things that God has done to your life. And you see that life will never be a miserable thing. You always enjoy life because that is what you are created to be. May God bless you as you think upon these words, what the Bible has told us, to make, to make use of every opportunity that comes our way and to think wisely and not as foolish people. God bless you. God bless you. And reach you with the word, his word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you that you have shown it in our, in the scriptures. That as long as we keep our faith in you. Lord God, we thank you so much that you are not a distant God. Who can only be worshipped from far. We thank you that we are your dearly loved children. And we are always, you are always there for us. Through Jesus, you have come closer to us so that we can truly know you. Thank you, dear God, that Christ, we are part of your great plan. And we want to thank you that you are reminding us to take every opportunity that is provided to us so that we are able to do good. Whatever we are doing, doesn't go unnoticeable because you are always there. Remove us from taking unwise decisions which will ruin our future. Help us, Father, and guide us to be your servants who are always guided by the word of God. Bless every one of us, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I also want to encourage you, brothers, so that uh, we don't forget to give thanks to God. Always give thanks. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings as you count your fingers. 
and you see what the Lord has done to you. As you count these blessings, be thankful. I'm just reminding you, just be thankful. It's time for you to thank God. It's time to give your thanksgiving. Let us pray for our thanksgiving offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you always remind us in the scriptures that we always need to be thankful. There are a lot of things that you've done to us, a lot of blessings that you've done to us, a lot of blessings that have poured on us. Father, we want to thank you with our families as we live in this land of opportunities where we can take advantage of every opportunity that comes our way to do the best. Bless us, Father. Bless this offering. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us receive grace. As a dearly loved children, Father, we have presented ourselves before you. Now we go out to follow example. Lord, to live our lives according to your will and to spread your wonderful love. Go with us, Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you all. May God continue to enrich you, especially as Christians. Bless you.